You ready? All right, let's do this. Let's do it. So I got to say, first of all, you are really tall in person. How tall are you? Six foot. My wow. dad's 6'4", so I was uh, always wanting to beat the old man, so I feel like I'm not very tall at all, but uh, uh, grew up in a tall family. Well, I think I beat Tom Cruise, so that's good mm -hmm. enough, right? All right. So um, I'm here with Dr. Michael Greger from NutritionFacts.org. Uh, we are at the PCRM conference. Thank you so much for your time. Sure. I'm so excited about this conference. Anyone who's listened to this who didn't come, make sure you go next year. That's right. And I think last time we talked was back in 2013. We did like a Skype uh, call. You had your beard back then. No beard anymore, especially you got summertime. <laughs> I don't know how I did it. And you were bobbing your head back and forth. And I was like, what is he doing? But I think you were on a Cocaine. treadmill. Cocaine. That's what, no. <laughs> it was, uh, right, it was treadmill, yeah. Right. All right, cool. Well, I got some um, questions for you. My first one is, you go through so many studies every year. What are some of your favorite studies that kind of stick out to you that you would recommend people to really look at if they're interested in the power of plant-based nutrition? Every single study that I love goes right up into a video on nutritionfacts.org. I mean, there's no stu I mean, it's rare that a study, you know, that a good study won't make it into a video. And right. every single video has a click on the sources cited. Um, there's the the citations. They're hyperlinked. You can click and download the you know PDF. Read the whole thing yourself. Make sure I didn't take anything out of context or anything. But I mean, it's critical that you know anytime someone said, look, if it's you know you're buying a toaster or something online, mm -hmm. then you know some random opinion of some stranger might make a difference to you. It's right. like, oh, you, know, the, you like the red one, fine, okay. But when it comes to the health and well-being of your family, like literally life or death choices, then like what someone told you at the gym to eat or what's you know some checkout line magazine or something it's like if there's ever anything in life to make a decision based on evidence right i mean it should be your health and well-being of your family right and so when someone says eat this don't eat that so what are you saying why do you say like obviously you weren't born with that knowledge so where did you come across that and you have no idea. Is that just some like weird anecdote thing? Do they think Martians told them that, or, or do they they or do they have evidence to back that up? And even if they do have evidence, is that the best available balance of evidence? Is mm -hmm. that some outlier? Is that some you know study funded by the the gizmo industry that tells you to eat gizmos? I mean, um, and so you know you always have to not just cite the science. Show me the science. I mean, that's why I started doing this. So you want to know what my favorite articles are? They're all there. Um, I mean, although sometimes there's an article, it's a great article, but I just can't. So I want all my videos to be, uh, you know, interesting, groundbreaking, and practical. And so sometimes, you know, there's some, like, there's some great new study on broccoli. It's like, I've been there, done that. It's just not, I mean, it's not groundbreaking, right? So right. that, so it may be a great study on broccoli that never sees the light of day. Or there's a study that, you know, is uh, you know is, is groundbreaking, but it's just like, and it's interesting, but it's like about some like wild berry that grows in Siberia or something, not available commercially. Like, who cares if some like some crazy whortleberries growing somewhere has good because you can't, it's not practical, right? And then, but probably the biggest gap is there's some things that are that are practical. Intra or practical groundbreaking, but I, for some reason I just can't make them into it. Like it's just like it would just be a boring video. I can't think of a hook. Right. I can't think of humor. I can't think. <laughs> and that's just a failing on my part. And so it's really sad. I hate to see those articles go because well, like, people gotta... really need to know this stuff. <clears throat> but if I can't make these videos watchable, interesting, no one's gonna see them. Well, the thing is, you gotta use your time as wisely as mm. possible. So you probably cover the most urgent and the most important articles. Of course, there's so much information out there, you know, but you got to do your best to get the most important information out there. And um, yeah, I totally agree with like reviews for like toasters and things like that can be handy, like especially with what Amazon's doing now. But when it comes to the health, you have to look for credibility. You have to go to the right people. Oh, no. So I disagree. See, I think credibility is a terrible way to, right? Because credibility, I mean, that's, that's, uh, there's actually a, a fallacy, right? It's kind of like that, uh, authority fallacy, something like that, where it's just like someone says it and you believe it just because of who they are. It's just like, oh, wait a second. 
Right there, look, Dr. Atkins, you know, Atkins, that guy, he was a cardiologist. You want credibility? He is a heart doctor, and he says he bacon and butter. So obviously, based on credibility, based right. on authority, right? No, it's be based, show me the science, right? right. Um, and, uh, you know, and obviously you couldn't. Right, right. Um, let me get into a, um, an interesting topic. So the bioavailability of plants is often considered inferior to um, animal products. Like, for example, when you're thinking of iron, people will usually recommend heme iron over non-heme iron, mm. heme iron being in meat and non-heme in uh, plants. Um, can you just kind of talk about the bioavailability of plants and the notion that they're inferior to the animal-based products? Well, so in some cases, that's actually beneficial. So he, iron is a good story. So, I mean, the reason why non-heme iron sources of iron are preferable is because there's actually iron is double-edged sword. There's iron overload diseases like hemochromatosis. Also, it's a pro-oxidant. Iron acts as a pro-oxidant. Um, associated with increased risk of Alzheimer's and cancer and diabetes and all sorts of other bad stuff. So you don't have too much iron. I mean, you want to have just enough um, that you're not anemic. Obviously, you need iron to build your blood cells. Um, uh, but I, kind of an ideal um, would be to have low iron stores, but not so, so low that your hemoglobin takes a hit. Um, and so that's kind of the, the, the kind of the sweet spot. And the way we get there is by choosing non-heme sources because our body's very good about regulating non-heme sources of iron. So if you're low in iron, right, then your body actually boosts its absorption. At the level of the intestinal uh, wall, there's these, these iron receptors that'll boost. And then when you have too much iron, it down-regulates. So you don't get too much iron, right? right? Um, but it can't do that as effectively with heme iron. Heme iron just kind of goes through the to, through the intestinal wall, whether we have high iron, low iron. So our body isn't as good as regulating it. So having something that's potentially toxic in high doses, being have good availability, bioavailability, is not necessarily a good thing. Right. Your body's smart. If you have lots of calcium, it'll downregulate your calcium absorption. If you have low calcium, it upgrades your calcium absorption. And body, if you thought about it, like. I mean, we evolved for millions of years without nutrient tables, without you know, being able to look up something on the computer. I mean, it's like our body is smart enough to uh, to make a lot of the kind of calculations on themselves. I mean, look, you know, like, so bioavailability, how about of calories? Bioavailability of calories are lower in plant foods, right? Because mm -hmm. plant foods, calories are stuck, whole plant foods, they're stuck inside cell walls, right? Cell walls are only found in plants, right? We have bones to hold ourselves up. Plants have fiber to hold themselves up. Cell walls are indigestible. We don't, they're made out of cellulose. We can't digest cellulose. Our good back gut bacteria can. And so we eat whole plant foods. We have this wonderful... Uh, these all these probiotics to, to feed our, our good gut flora, but um, a lot of those calories just make it all the way through us. Um, and so, you know, we make these calculations like, well, like almonds theoretically have this many calories, but if you actually have to find how many calories are actually not flushed down the toilet, it's actually significantly low, about 20% lower, right? That's a lot of, and yeah. so it's actually good that there's less bioavailability, right? And so, um, I mean, so I mean, if you think about our leading cause of death and disability, are we dying from deficiency diseases or diseases of dietary excess? So when's the last time you heard of someone dying quashiorcor or pellagra or beriberi or scurvy versus have you ever heard of anyone dying from heart disease, diabetes, high blood pressure? Like all these, I mean, it's like, right. what are we, right? I mean, so, so... I mean, so we want to, so most of the stuff people are eating, we want less absorption. We want poor donut bioavailability. <laughs> like that would be the ideal, right? We don't sense. want to absorb that stuff into our body. <laughs> um, but unfortunately, actually the bioavailability of refined carbs like, you know, white flour, white rice is really high. And that's bad. The high glycemic index it gets absorbed super quickly, um, supranaturally quickly, meaning our bodies just weren't designed to handle it. How about when it comes to protein? Um, you often hear that uh, plant protein's um, incomplete. It doesn't have all the essential amino acids it's that we true. need. It's just not true. I mean, it's just simply not true. Anyone says, they say, oh, I'm sorry, what amino acid is, is not there? What essential amino acid? There's only one food in the diet that is actually an incomplete protein. It's an animal protein. It's called gelatin. 
Um, gelatin doesn't, there's like, you could not live off of gelatin, but you would actually become protein deficient because it's actually missing essential amino acids. But all plant foods have all, in fact, that's where essential amino acids come from. The only reason that a steak has essential amino acids, they're essential, meaning you can't make them, the cow can't make them, the cow got them from plants. Right. All essential amino acids come from the earth. And so we can kind of cut out the middle cow, right, go straight to... Get it from the source. All right. essential amino acids come from plants and micro and microorganisms. Um, they don't come from animals. That by definition, they're, they're, we can't make them. They, these animals can't make them. Plants can make them, right. though, and we can get all we need. And they just come in different ratios, but they're all there. Because they right. say you combine rice and beans, for example, and that's a complete right. Right. That, unquote, right. You know. that was that was actually started in Vogue <laughs> magazine. There was an article I. Talk about. I have a video about it. There's this article from Frances Moore LeBay. She wrote in Vogue magazine in the 1970s that this this what's now known as the protein myth um, that we need to combine. You know, to, because yes, they all have all their essential amino acids, but some are low in lysine, some are low in so you complement you rice beans, you you know, um, and this just simply. I mean, we we now know it's simply not true. In fact, it wasn't even true at the time, and she, poor Frances Moore LeBay since apologized and um, feels really bad about it but um, but yeah I mean it's just so so basically your body does it for you so you know one day you eat something with high lysine um, and then the next day you eat something that with a low lysine like your body you're basically sloughing off about 90 grams of protein every day just from your digestive tract and secretions so there's all these amino acids that can mix and match with whatever you eat oh you ate something low with lysine you ate something high, high in lysine last week well we just buy that way boom right. and just i mean our body does it for us um and so yeah it, it, it doesn't make any sense um, what do you know about intermittent fasting? Because that's a common question that I get often as a nutritionist is, do you recommend it? Or should people do it? Yeah, so um, in my uh, in my next book, we have December 2019, I'll have a whole chapter on intermittent fasting, also a chapter on water-only fasting. And, you know, and so there's lots of ways to do it. So intermittent fasting is kind of a broad topic. There's kind of like the 5-2 or alternate day fasting or this, the kind of um, uh, the kind of 525, uh, the, uh, kind of, uh, fasting mimicking diet. Um, and, uh, and the question is, are there, um, benefits even without caloric restriction from, um, uh, you know, kind of get, once in a while kind of giving your body that stress of a certain amount of period, whether it's 16 hours or 24 hours or longer, um, whether that has, um, health benefits and that's something that i'm deep in 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 the, in the weeds on right now i'm looking forward to doing lots of videos about it um i've been seeing an increase in interest in vegan ketogenic diets and yeah. a lot of people are really interested in them i was wondering if i could have your take on them if you think they're healthier or... I mean, it's just ridiculous it's crazy it's like the anti-diet, right? I mean, it's just like, right? Right. It's just like... I mean, to me, it doesn't make any sense because, like, wh what are you eating? Are you eating lots of oils that would make it ketogenic? You know, I'm just wondering. It's, a, it's like, I mean, if there's one thing that... There's, like, the most uncontroversial thing in all of nutrition science is eat more fruits and vegetables, right? I mean, like, right. like nobody disagrees. I mean, nobody... Yep. Would, okay. And like that's the first thing. So, yeah, I mean, don't eat, don't eat fruit. So, Global Burden Disease Study, funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the largest study of disease risk factors in the world, found the number uh, estimated the number one dietary risk factor for death on the planet Earth was what? You say, well, what? Soda, processed meat? No, inadequate fruit consumption. Not eating enough fruit kills more people than anything else we're doing on our diet on right. the planet Earth. Right. Right. And I think number two is sodium too. But I mean, inadequate. Like, mm -hmm. come on. Yeah. And so. Any diet that says eat less fruit, you're like a you flag. need a you need a mountain of evidence to 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 to, to convince me, right? And they don't have any. I mean, the I mean, so the studies. So if you actually look, I mean, beyond 
um, intractable, in some cases, intractable pediatric epilepsy. But even like the, what about brain tumors? Even the brain tumor data is terrible. Like these people, the things that they hold up, like look, and even if it worked for brain tumors, so does chemotherapy. Should we eat chemotherapy shakes every day? Like it makes no sense. Let right? me ask you, because Lee Crosby, um, a former uh, classmate of mine, we were talking about ketogenic diets being helpful for people with epilepsy and seizures. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like maybe a vegan ketogenic diet could be used for that? Or do you feel oh, well, like there's so, other ways? So there's some real, so um, about 30% of cases, I mean, depending on what the cause of seizures are, in these pediatric epilepsy cases are, uh, are basically drug resistant. Um, and so what do you do in those cases? So usually ketogenic diet is kind of the second or third line, third, fourth okay. line treatment. Um, but and the reason is because these poor kids suffer all the things you would expect, bone fractures, um, growth stunting, um, kidney stones, constipation, like all the standard stuff. Um, and of course their lipids go crazy. Um, and so it's like, yeah, but it's better than seizing all day. Right. I mean, so, right. It's all cost versus benefits. Yeah. So tremendous downsides, but look, if that's all you got, look, we give people electroshock therapy and for some cases, suicidal depression can actually do more, more benefit. Than, right. So it's actually a good, but it, would you want to just like, get, you know, shock? I mean, but it doesn't make sense. Right. So chemotherapy can be useful for people with uh, certain types of cancer but you just don't want to inject yourself with chemotherapy for the hell of it. Like, it, right. we're not, we, I mean, you can't, it doesn't even make sense, even if it worked for cancer or worked for, like, that doesn't mean mm -hmm. that it's a healthy thing to do. Right. Are you saying something that works for disease is good for you? Why aren't you taking antibiotics all day long? Why aren't you taking, like, it just doesn't make any sense. Right. Like, it doesn't even make logic, right? I don't know. Yeah, it's really, I mean, anyway. There's really, I mean, it, I mean, this really interesting stuff that happens during more long fasting with ketosis and um, could help with, uh, you know, decreasing hunger and things. I mean, there's some legitimate research questions out there. But, um, like, disease reversal? Like, is there a case of ketogenic diets reversing heart disease, right? Until there is, I mean, come on. I mean, plant-based diet is just, I mean, hands down. I mean, people are literally dying. Well, let me ask you something. This is the extreme case. Mm -hmm. So there's a medical doctor by the name Sean Baker. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of him? Mm -hmm. No, um, he eats an all carnivorous meat diet. Okay. Um, and he's put up his blood work. Well, and from a, of scurvy. Raw meat? That's Must what I'm raw saying. Meat. Right, yeah. It's raw meat. You can get scurvy. I mean, because raw meat is vitamin C. And um, he, he put up his blood work. Right, yeah. right. He put up his blood work and he had high glucose levels. His LDL was really high. Really? Um, what do you think of diets like that like he's just claiming that people should be eating a carnivorous diet well I maybe mean, he's putting himself at risk and he's and what's worse is i mean look if he wants he can do it look he wants to smoke there's people who smoke cigarettes right you want to smoke cigarettes fine but telling people smoking cigarettes is healthy for them that's where i draw the line right um and so and then you know it's just it, so it's 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 irresponsible in a i mean so like there's people out there saying the world's flat fine you want to say the world's flat Right. Fine. Okay. But that's not going to kill anybody. You believe that. You don't believe that. You convince other people of it. No one's going to die. Yeah, sure. right? right. But this is the same level of craziness, but with like real life consequences. Right? I mean, the people could actually get hurt if they follow some of this advice. Um, and that, and it's just like, that's on your conscience. Right. And so you have to be really careful. When you make those kind of recommendations, and people should be really skeptical, you know, don't listen to me, listen to the science. Don't listen to it. there's no, you know, don't listen to any gurus, right? Always get to stick to the science. Well, that's, demand that, the science. That's what I love about you and your work is you just always cover the articles themselves. You don't put your opinion into it. I um, try not to. Sometimes it slips in, but right. <laughs> I do my best. Awesome. Where can people find you, Dr. Gurney? So you can go to nutritionfacts.org and uh, and see all my work for free. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for your time. Absolutely. Appreciate Happy it. to be here. Awesome.